plant another day inside here. <laughs> I'm quite tired to be here. It's 24 of August and a lot to do. But I hope cross finger next year I will splash hellos. But today I will show you some things I did in this two last week. I prepared the jump cleat for the winch. I put the floor on the bow cabin. Uh, I needed to drill for the chain plate for the stay sail and for the lifeline just behind the windlass. A lot to do, but I need to do this stuff because I need to run. Today is come here, Piero, my friend, because we need to drill the deck. Oh, very delicate task and make a perfect hole for the new uh, Witcher chai plate for the lifeline or eventually for the stay sail. But I will show you all my plan. In any case, guys, follow me in this uh, new episode and of course I hope you like it. I'm sorry if my not English is not perfect, I don't speak uh, too much, but uh, it's not my language, I try to do the best I can. In any case, thank you for watching and we start just now. And here we are, you can see the Wichar chain plate M8, 5.4 tons breaking. And this is my plane to install the chain plate. I make a very easy draw of where I want to install the chain plate. It's a very tight space and you need to make a puzzle to respect all the distance between the flange of the windlass and the other. Me and Piero discuss a lot where to put the chain plate uh, because uh, it need to be installed from the bulkhead and the base of the windlass made by tick. So you need to find the correct position where to drill. You can make a mistake because if you make a mistake you drill a perfect tick uh, deck. So there is no way. So we spend about half an hour to check exactly the distance, the measure and everything uh, to make a correct holes. And of course you need also to center in the middle of the deck. So a lot of stuff, it's like a puzzle I already saw you. You need to put all together and plane before all the operation you need to do. Now it's time to drill the first hole. I know that Piero is very precise and when he bring the measurement, you 90% be sure that all is correct. So you can see here, take three times before start to drill because he won't stay just in the center of uh, the principal tick uh, uh, divisory between the starboard part and port side of the boat. And here we check again, check, check, check. You can't make all the perfect work and after that fuck up the holes. So here's all the work. Now I help Piero to take in position the chain plate and now we install the, the second bolt. Piero check also the measure another time to be sure that hole is perfect and we start to drill the last hole. Here we are. I use those provisory uh, bolts but uh, for sure I will use the bolt that I order in England that have the same looking of the 30 years old bolts. Now we are signing the chain plate using a pencil because with the sign we will drill the chain plate. You can see the plate, stainless steel plate inside the cabin that make a very nice looking, perfectly countersink to accept the screw that I ordered from England. And now Vannis drill the original chain plate that need to be installed inside the chain locker. Countersink and job done. I'm just returned from Vanny uh, laboratory and make the hole of the chain plate. And I need to assemble and check if all fit well. For sure I need to countersink here and we go. You can see the perfect looking of the bolts as was original. Okay guys, it's quite perfect. 
and now I show you inside the the chain plate how it work. Uh, you can see here the chain plate. I need to make the hole through hole just here and there and go inside the cabin and after that fix I will install also the baking plate inside the cabin the locker uh, I did this chain plate and this system because it is useful if I use of course the lifeline very strong and also if I install a stay sail for the stay sail I will use a textile shrouds that I will install in the mast but this will be the next year at the moment I installed this one but before I proceed with the work, I got a problem. You see, inside it's difficult to have a very flat surface, so I need to prepare a very nice and tidy flat surface so the baking plate work very well. So, the best solution, make a base made by resin, epoxy resin, you will see. But before using the epoxy, for sure, I need to install the baking plate. I need to make the perfect hole and after that, using epoxy. You can see here, the bolts are installed inside the chain locker but when I finish the head of the bolts will be inside the locker in the bow cabin. And here you can see just inside the locker on the bow cabin the hole that I did one second ago. You can see the bolts. Okay guys now we are more light so it's more easy to see my work. I completely make all the Seven holes. After a small modification, I completely insert the bolts and now we go in the other operation using epoxy resin. Of course, first things, using some tape to avoid the resin uh, could ruin my deck and also in the tape, the resin epoxy doesn't work. Protect the chain plate with the tape for the same reason, avoid that the epoxy uh, stitch on the metal. Tape is fantastic for protect the metal from stitching with epoxy. Now I use epoxy with a brush. I put the chain plate and another great thing to avoid that epoxy stitch is the grease. I completely cover the bolt with the grease because I need to maintain perfectly in position the chain plate inside the anchor locker. Hi guys. Today's evening, I am inside power plant. You can see Halos just here. And now we will check if the work that they did yesterday, it worked and the epoxy cured and all the chain plate come down without problem. Now we test now, I have the gloves and we go. For sure it, and now we'll check inside if all come down very easily. Some people ask me how I can squeeze inside a, a locker and I will show you. And after that, like this, oh, and squeeze like this. How oh. you can see here, the chain plate, I need to cut this bolt because it's very long, but the epoxy cured. Now I need to take out all the stuff. Epoxy and grease doesn't work well. It's perfect to avoid. It's perfect to avoid 
the gluing. Now I need a little more force to use on the bolts, but uh, grease work well. Still grease. Okay, and this is the chain plate. Okay, it's cured perfectly. I need to stretch myself inside again another time. Oh, job done, very easy. You can see here the perfect base. I need to send a little here and take out those one, but this is the perfect base where the chain plate will, um, will attach. After that, now I sand, I clean everything, and after that I paint here. It's completely flat so it fit perfect my chain plate now it's very strong now I need to paint and after that we proceed with the installation but for the moment is time to paint you will ask what I'm doing now yes I tell you I completely clean inside the holes I take out all the grease with uh, some products because butyl and grease doesn't work, it doesn't make watertight. So I spend half an hour with sacetons, with uh, the greaser, everything to be sure that not any single drop of grease is inside the hole where the chime plate bolts pass through. So you can see all my effort to take out all the grease from the holes. And now with the help of Mariano, my friend, that helped me to take the bolt firm with the uh, screw, I start to use the butyl on the bolts. I already cleaned very well with acetons and now I start to wrap any single bolt, the three bolts of the chain plate with the butyl. You can see the three bolts completely wrapped with butyl on the head. So this to avoid the water penetration and now we use some tef gel on the gasket so there is less friction on the d-ring of the chain plate of course i don't want that the tef gel uh, touch the butyl because the butyl must be very very far away from any type of grease if you want that the butyl work great it's like a puzzle very small operation to avoid the big disaster. Okay, now is the right time to wrap the thread of the bolts just below the gasket and I make a very nice and tidy clean cone of butyl that permit me to make watertight the hole on the deck. And now it's time to install all the system on the holes very slow with the help of the screw I push the bolts inside the own holes I don't want to turn the bolts because if you turn you detach the butyl Okay, with the help of Mariano, I start to tight the bolts inside and Mariano maintain the bolts completely firm. You can see very aligned because you need to have a very good looking of the chain plate on the bolt when installed. And now it's time to clean the excess of butyl from the chain plate. And I start with a small blade
and a nice clean and you can see 90% the job is done you see the beauty very strong support inside outside I made this small piece of uh, mahogany and I cut in this shape uh, using the milli machine CNC at uh, Top Tech uh, factory and now I'm start to install it on the side of the electric uh, panel. I put together two things, the airflow inside the electric uh, panel and also I will leave some space to install the support for the microphone of the, of the VHF. See the final result. Okay, I need to install the clips there and check the correct direction of the line of the sheet. So for sure I will have two of those one, one there and one to make the regulation of the gemma sail and avoid the touch of the windscreen. Now I need to install the clip in the correct position. Those are the new clips with the original screw. I show you the last week work that I need to finish today. First of all, I want to show you the first fuck up. You can see I cover a uh, wrong hole I make a mistake because I used the original holes that was made from Halberassi and this hole is not well centered on the winch side because it's too outside. So I completely make a new hole just about one centimeter inside and put the correct inclination of the jump clit for the sheet of the winch. So now I need to cut this one and also I need to send and install the um, jump clip. You will see. Okay. I already used some epoxy on the hole here and just inside to protect the wood from 
enter uh, water entering but also because the butyl will work very well when is the tick is covered by epoxy there is a hole but we will be covered by the jump lid and also here you can see here i completely covered by epoxy the hole so the butyl will stitch very well Okay, ready to be installed and now I will bring the cleat. So guys, I bought six millimeter for 60 millimeter because it's very thick plate here. The original screw was about 50 and also I make a chain plate for the cleats. So it will be very strong. I need to clean with acetones and install with butyl and teff gel. I need to protect the aluminum and the stainless steel with teff gel. A small patch okay you can see nice and tight As you already saw, you need to push the bolts just in position to avoid to turn it and after that you can use the wrench. And I, I need to wait that the beauty will squeeze off and after that I clean and another tight and the job is done. You can see, perfect. Guys, here we are for today. The episode is finished. If you like my video, please thumb up and leave your comment below. I am start again with the work and there are a lot of episodes that are coming. But for the moment is all and have a, you a very nice weekend. We see you in the next episode. Ciao!